Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today, we're gonna to be making Texas style pork ribs. Hallelujah. I'm really excited about this video because this is a Texas barbecue style pork rib. A lot of videos you see on YouTube, including my own videos, really come more from kind of a comp background where you take a rack of ribs and you have it, you either cut it down to a St. Louis cut rib or you maybe buy them that way. But here in Texas, it's really common at a barbecue joint to have a full spare rib. The great thing about this, they're cheaper per pound than St. Louis cut ribs. You get more um, rib on the slice so when you see a plate of texas barbecue or a tray of texas barbecue you see these really long ribs this is why so you get all this added meat up here that we're not going to cut away like i said um, and also we're going to prepare them very differently than what we have done in our previous rib videos um, we're going to season these what i call an old school way it's effectively going to be almost a salt and pepper rib a lot of guys in the barbecue business don't like a lot of sweet barbecue if you're around it all the time so guys that really helped me back in the day of learning to cook, like Jamie Gears of Jambo Pits, he said, you know, I'll make some salt and pepper ribs. So these aren't going to be exactly salt and pepper, but they're going to be really close to that. Uh, they're going to be cooked no wrap uh, with post oak on our mill scale offset, and they're going to be delicious. So let's jump into this. So these are prairie fresh spare ribs. Uh, they came two to a package, bought them at my local grocery store. And here's what we're going to do with them. We've got to cut the chine bone off here, so you can kind of see this here. We're going to, we're going to cut this off. We're going to remove any excess fat, and we're simply going to shape them up to round out the edges just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get this, get this chine cut off here. So just knife, big heavy chef knife, you can remove that real easily. So I'm going to go back uh, to a boning knife, and here's where I'm going to round things out. You don't want any pointy edges when you smoke something because that's just going to burn off. I'm also going to choose to cut the end off here where it gets a little too pointy. Now you can save any of this trim or like I always say, you can choose, um, you can choose not to cut this off at all if you don't want to. Now we're starting with uh, ribs that we've actually already removed the membrane from. So let me show you that. With a paper towel, simply grab the membrane, peeled it right off just to save a little bit of time. And again, I'm just rounding out the edges here. If you've got any excess fat like this right here, I like to take that off. Fat is flavor. But if you can get rid of that, um, you can get better bark. And also, I don't like a real fatty bite, personally, so I like to kind of just shave that off. Got a little more right here in the middle. All right, let's look, on the, let's look on the back side. I also don't like this flap. It's just not gonna cook evenly, so I'm gonna remove that. But like I always say, make the choice. If you wanna keep it, you're welcome to keep it. But I'm all about this stuff cooking even. I'll leave all of that fat since we're, we're cooking this side down. Remove any errant edges. That looks pretty good. So if you take your knife and cut right across here, that would give you the nice square St. Louis cut ribs that you know, you've probably done in the past. Um, I'm actually gonna cut one more bone off here on the end. Let me get my chef knife. I wanna round this out just a little more. So that's why I took that off. Okay. So nice and round, so let's season. Again, we're going to start on the bone side. Now, how I'm going to season these, I'm going to start with some 16 mesh coarse pepper. So I'm basically going to season with pepper first, then a little holy cow. You don't have to do this extra pepper, but I like a lot of pepper. So if you, if you want to go this route, 
Uh, my buddy Johnny at Goldie's taught me this. Put your pepper on first so it doesn't bounce off other additional seasoning. Big coarse pepper will catch that smoke and help you build some bark. And that's why we're putting it on first. Now I'm gonna come back across that with my holy cow. Holy cow is primarily salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic. That's why it's not 100% just salt and pepper rib. So this is gonna be a savory rib. Again, back to what Jamie Gear said, kind of an old school salt and pepper. Nobody's mad about a little bit of garlic. I'm just gonna pat it in and I'm gonna flip to the other side. And I'm gonna repeat the exact same process. So just season up high so you can get an even, an kind of an even application so you don't get real clumpy. Okay. And then however much holy cow you like. And again, season with what you want. Okay, no binder. These were wet enough to me. I just threw it on. You certainly could use a binder if you want. I'm gonna kind of give this a pat. And I'm gonna let this seasoning adhere. I'm gonna give it 15 minutes. Never season your ribs more than one hour in advance. So let this sit anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, whatever you feel like, kind of your preference. So I'm gonna go check on my fire while this is adhering and we'll be back to get these things cooked. All right, guys, I got my smoker rolling 250 degrees with post oak. You obviously could cook these on any type of smoker or cooker that you have, even a pellet grill, Kamado, whatever. But today we're going very traditional Central Texas barbecue style. That's why we're running post oak on an offset. So, all right, I went ahead and prepared the other rack while we were waiting. waiting. Um, I've got a huge crew to feed today on video day. My guys want to eat, so we need plenty to eat. So let's get these on. I'm gonna lay them right in the middle. I'm not using my fire block today uh, because we've only got a couple racks. I'm gonna put it this way. And we've got them plenty far away from the fire. I am running a water pan today. That's just my preference to keep some moisture in there. All right, let's talk about the cook. This is gonna be different from what we've done in the past on our other rib videos. These are just gonna cook straight through until they're done, no wrap. I'm thinking they're gonna be four to five hours, we'll see. Um, and the way we're going to tempt them, or, or sorry, test them to be done is to not tempt them with our thermopin this time. We're actually going to be looking for the right color, uh, and we're going to pick them up and look for a bend but not break. And then we're going to hold them in foil with sauce for an hour or two uh, before we eat them. So we're going to let these roll. I'm literally going to do nothing other than potentially spritz them if they look dry, which I don't think they will. And I'll see you guys back in a little bit. All right, guys, let's check in on our ribs. We've been smoking right at five hours. Uh, you know, we were aiming for 250. Sometimes it was a little lower. Sometimes it was a little higher. We're a little higher right now, and that's just fine. And they look beautiful. We spritz these one time. You see how pretty those look. Look at that color. But here's what you're looking for. I mean, when your bones are popping like that, you know you're pretty well done. But I want to flex them, and I want them to bend but not break open. So I know those... I know those are done. So we're just going to hold them in foil. So if this was a Texas barbecue joint, we'd be wrapping in foil and putting in a 140 degree warmer until lunch service, which is usually hour or two, whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna spritz this foil. And the reason for that is I'm gonna use, an, I'm gonna use a barbecue sauce that I wanna thin out a little bit. So I'm using my friend's Goldie's barbecue sauce. If you don't know Goldie's, Goldie's is currently the number one barbecue joint on the famous Texas Monthly Top 50. My boys over there recently bottled their sauce and they gave me a bottle, so I thought, why not use that? This is a Texas rib. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this on the foil and we're just gonna let the ribs lay in this, meat side down. And again, I spritzed it to dilute it just a little bit. And then we're gonna wrap them up and we're just gonna let these ribs just rest like this, right? Meat side down, bam, right in that. And I have a warmer. Um, I also have Yetis. So we're just gonna put this in a Yeti. And I told you we weren't doing this by temp. 
But if I had to give you a temperature, I would guess they were in the 190s or so. So I feel comfortable dropping these straight into a Yeti, but little tip here, anytime you're going right into a Yeti with a big meat, it's gonna continue to cook just a little bit if it comes right off the pit. So I'll let these sit out for a few minutes um, to make sure the cooking process has stopped, so 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna throw it in the Yeti, lock it down. We're probably gonna get, only gonna give them an hour because we're doing a video and I'm hungry. These look awesome. So off to the Yeti I go, and we'll see you guys in one hour. All right, guys, the ribs have been resting for one hour and 45 minutes. They don't have to rest that long. That's just based on kind of what we had going on, but they've rested plenty of time. And let's see how they look. Oh man, woo, Yahtzee. Man, those look awesome. The sauce looks super good on there. Open up the other rack. Man. So good. So I would take any uh, any excess sauce here. Let's pour it on. Kind of just mix it around, make them look pretty. I always tell you, eat with your eyes first. Dude, these smell amazing. All right, little tip here. Um, you know, sometimes bones, rib bones, like when you go to slice, can be tricky. And I can tell that these right here kind of hook this direction. Um, but if you ever have trouble slicing, you don't want to catch a bone, what you could do is you could flip over um, to this side and you can actually look on the bone side and you can see the direction that these are going. Now obviously you could mess up your sauce a little bit, but you got plenty of reserve sauce to put back there on top if need be. But man, let's look at that. Look at that smoke. Man, whew, that looks so good. All right, moment of truth. Oh, man, I got lucky. Perfectly cooked rib right there. Man, that's good. Whew, man, that is so good. <clears throat> That's such a contrast to sweet stuff. It's kind of like the uh, Mexican pulled pork video we did on our channel. And we said, you know, I grew up on sweet pork. That's refreshing, like I could eat that. Like I really don't want to sit down and eat a lot of sweet ribs, but that right there, I could eat half a rack of those right now with some cold Miller Lite. That's good. Shout out to my boy, Johnny aka Jerry barbecue over at Goldie's for sending me that sauce. That was such a good compliment. Now, I put a lot of pepper on here, so it's kind of peppered forward, but I love that, to be honest with you. I mean, that is Texas barbecue. I know my buddy Joe at Zavala's will love that too. He uses a lot of pepper, but man, that is freaking good. Mill scale, as usual, ran like a dream. Um, I couldn't be happier with that, so if you guys replicate that, I promise that you and your friends and family are gonna love that. But if you like what we're doing, Please like and subscribe to the channel. We're going to put this in our hardcore barbecue playlist where we've got loads of barbecue videos on all the classics. Hope to see you guys next time.